All right. Now on to inverse functions. So let's go to the definition. Let f of x be a one-to-one -one function with domain a and range b. Then its inverse is f inverse of x and has <coughs> uh, domain b and range a. Sorry about that graph something. Um, so it looks like f inverse of y is equal to x. This implies, this, this means if and only if f of x is equal to y. So this notation means if and only if. So now, uh, important things to know about this is the domain of f of x is equal to the range of x, f of x, and the range of f inverse of x is equal to the domain of f of x. So that's very important. Um, it needs to be a one-to-one -one function or it will not work. And, this is big, f inverse of x is not equal to 1 over f of x. Like, when we have, a, I don't know, x to the negative 1, that is equal to 1 over x, but that is not the case for inverses. Alright, now on to how to solve inverses for functions. So, we're going to do this with the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2. So, step 1. Write y equals f of x. So, you set it equal to y. Now, this is the easy part, the extremely easy part. Um, so, let's do that. So, step 1. 1. y is equal to x cubed plus 2. All right. Now what's step two? Step two is the hardest part. Solve for x in terms of y. Well, it's the hardest part, but it's really not that hard. But you get the point. All right. So, let's solve for x. x cubed is equal to y minus two x is equal to the cubed root of y minus 2. And then you replace x and y with, <clears throat> you replace x with y, and then change y with f inverse of x. Also pretty easy, but it, it sounds kind of confusing. And then step 3. So you go from you go from that to you go from this to this, that's step three, and boom, you're done with solving inverses. And so now on to graphing of inverses. Um, all you really have to do is reflect the graph f of x over y, the line y equals x. So what does that look like? I'll show you. So you have your x, y coordinate. You have your y equals x line, and let's say you have your x cubed, right? The inverse of this is reflected over y equals x. So, what it will look like is Pretty poor line, I must say, but that's what this will look like. So it's reflected over y equals x. Not, not too bad. So now we're going on to logarithmic functions. Um, so if b is greater than zero, if b is greater than zero and not equal to zero, the exponential function f of x equals bx is either increasing 
or decreasing. It is one to one by the horizontal line test and its inverse is called a logarithmic function with base b and is denoted by log b. So that's a lot. But let's just let me show you what it looks like. So f of x is equal to b to the x. We remember this from the previous lessons. And so f, f inverse of b to the x looks like this. Right? It is in this form. All right, and we can see this uh, a little bit better. So back to our previous thing, f inverse of x is equal to y, if and only if f of y is equal to x. Well, so we can see it. So log bx is equal to y, if and only if b to the y equals x. So let's look at the graph. We all remember the lovely graph of y equals b to the x. Looks a little something like this. It's the y-axis at 1. Um, so now you put in your, your y equals x line to that you're going to reflect over, so we can see it's inverse. We can see it looks like this. So this is y equals log b x, and this is y equals b to the x. Right? Whoops. Uh -huh. So what, what is log b to the x? What, what is all this stuff? Well, let's look at a little bit of calculations. Let's find its domain and range and that sort of thing. So um, log b log b, b to the x, is equal to x for every x in the set of real numbers. And this sign, this symbol is the real numbers, and this means it's in the set of real numbers. Now onto the domains and ranges of these functions. So as we remember, y equals b to the x, its domain is all of r, so that's negative infinity to positive infinity, and its range is from 0 to infinity. Alright, now on to y equals log bx. Well, so we know that for inverse functions, domains and ranges are switched. So we know that the domain is from 0 to infinity, and the range is from negative infinity to infinity. All right? So, pretty simple. Now we're, I'm going to show you a few laws of logs. Kind of fun to say. Here we have our log, uh, laws of logs. So, log b x uh, x y is equal to log b x plus log b y. Um, the second law is log b x over y is equal to log b x minus log b y. And the third law, 
log b x to the r is equal to r log bx, where r is in the set of real numbers. So these laws are actually extremely important for calculus because you're going to use them a lot with uh, derivatives and integrals. So I would definitely make note of these because these are super important. So with that said, now we're moving on to natural logs. So here comes the letter, letter E again. I know I talked about it briefly in the previous lesson, um, and we're going to talk about it a lot more now. All right, now we're on to E. Sorry if there's a change in the light. I had to go grab my laundry. <laughs> um, all right, so, what, uh, so now log E x is equal to ln x, and what ln x is uh, the natural log of x. So ln of x is equal to y, if and only if e to the y equals x, right? ln of e to the x is equal to x, if x is in r. And e to the ln of x is equal to x when x is greater than 0, all right? And ln of e is equal to 1. Um, now onto the change of base formula. Um, log bx is equal to ln x over ln b. And this is actually really nice because it helps us solve, like, uh, solve complicated logarithms like log, log 8. 5 is equal to ln 5 over ln 8, which is really easy to put into the calculator. You can just click ln your 5 divided by ln 8, and that equals 0.7739, approximately. So now we're going to be on to the last section of this lesson. Um, inverse trig functions, and you may be thinking, wait, you said sine is not a one-to-one -one function, so how could it be inverted? Well, we do this by restricting the domain from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, so it will, in fact, pass the horizontal line test. The inverse of sine is called arcsine and is donate, denoted as sine uh, to the negative 1 x or arcsine. So now we have our fancy equation that we've looked at multiple times throughout this video. So f inverse of x equals y if and only if f of y equals x. Well, so sine inverse of x is equal to y if and only if sine of y is equal to x when y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. We have to restrict it so um, it would actually work and pass the horizontal line test, as I said before. So the domain of sine inverse of x is equal to negative 1, 1, and the range of sine inverse of x is equal to negative pi over 2, pi over 2. Now onto arc cosine of x. Uh, we do the same trick to restrict its domain, the domain of cosine of x, and we set it between 0, uh, x is greater than or equal to 0, and less than or equal to pi. So that restricts the domain of cosine of x, so it passes the horizontal line test. And so cosine of x, cosine inverse of x is equal to y if and only if cosine of y is equal to x when um, y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 0 than pi. And the domain of cosine inverse of x is equal to negative 1, 1. And the range of cosine of x is equal to 0, pi. Right? So now on to the cancellation equations. Sine of sine inverse of x is equal to x. And sine inverse of sine of x is equal to x. And cosine cosine inverse of x is equal to x, and cosine inverse cosine of x is equal to x. Now on to arc tan, um, and it's the same trick as before. We have to edit the domain of f of x uh, is equal to tan of x, and we have to edit the domain down to x is greater than pi, negative pi over 2 and less than pi over 2, but does not include the 
the uh, pi r over 2 and negative pi r over 2. Um, so it can never equal it. So um, now we have our tan inverse of x is equal to y if and only if tan of y is equal to x. And that is between y is greater than but not equal to negative pi over 2 and less than but not equal to pi over 2. Um, the domain of tan inverse of x is all real numbers and the range of tan inverse of x is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So now we are going to, the last thing we're covering for this lecture is you probably won't need these for really ever, but they're good to know just in case and who doesn't love uh, learning something new. Um, so these are the final trig identities um, for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Um, y equals co the inverse cosecant of x if and only if the cosecant of y equals x. So x, the absolute value of x has to be greater than or equal to 1, and y has to be in the interval 0 to pi over 2, and the union of pi to 3 or pi over 2. And what this means is the union of the two, it means y has to be in one of those intervals. So now to secant, y equals secant inverse of x, if and only if secant of y equals x. Um, again, x has to be greater than or equal to two or 1. And y is in the same union as before, 0 to uh, pi over 2, um, and pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. But what's changed here is, and I made a mistake when writing it, um, what's changed here is 0 and pi is actually included in this set, but in, uh, in this set, 0 and pi are not technically included, but pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 are included and denoted by the, the square brackets, which means they're actually in the interval, while for secant, pi over 2 is not actually part of the interval and neither is 3 pi over 2. Now to the final one, cotangent. y equals cotangent inverse of x, if and only if cotangent of y is equal to x. x is all real numbers, or is in, has to be in the set of all real numbers, and y has to be in the set between 0 and pi. So, thanks for watching this lesson. I know this one was a, a pretty long one. Uh, we covered a lot. So, thank you very much. Uh, and we're going to transition to some of the questions. Thank you. Alright, now on to the questions. We're going to be doing 9, 35, and 36. Um, so, the first one, 9, is determine if a function is 1 to 1. So, um, the easiest way to do this is just to draw out a graph and do a few horizontal line tests. So, that's what we'll do. So, we got our x, y coordinate, uh, coordinate system. And we know, okay, that's negative 3, so it hits the y-axis at negative 3. And it goes rise 2, run 1, rise 2, run 1. And we get this crooked graph that shouldn't be crooked, but it is because I can't draw straight lines. Um, and so if we do a few horizontal line tests, we know no value is taken twice, and so we know the function is 1 to 1. Right? Alright, so now on to 35 and 36. This is uh, find the exact value, so log 2, 32. So we can do the change of base formula, which is ln of 32 over ln of 2, and that would give us our answer. But there's an easier way to do this when we don't need a calculator. So this is equal to 2 to the x equals 32, right? Well, so if you know your powers of 2, you know it goes 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, right? So that's not too bad. So we just go, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, x equals 5 for this one. All right, now on to part B. Now it's 8 to the x is equal to 2. But this 8, if we look here, is equal to 2 to the 3. 
So we can do 2 to the 3 to the x is equal to 2. So if we want 2 to the 1, what do we have to multiply x by x times 3 to get um, 1? 1 third. So x is equal to 1 third. Because 1 third times 3 is equal to 1, which gives you 2 to the 1, which equals 2. So now on to 36a, it's log 5 over 1, or uh, log 5, 1 over 125. So we could, as I said before, we could do the change of base formula, but this is the same as saying 5 to the x is equal to 1 over 125. And then if you know your powers of 5, you know it goes... 5, 25, 125, and that's all I know, but that's all we need because we see, okay, 125, 125, but it's over 1, so what does it say? And this is uh, 1, 2, 3, so that's 5 to the 3 power, but it's 1 over 125, so we know it needs to be to the negative 3 power, so x equals negative 3. Now onto the last one. It's a uh, ln of one over e squared. This is saying, if we remember what ln is, it's log e to the one over e squared, which is equal to, or which implies that one wait e to the x is equal to one over e squared, and so we know this is e to the 2, but it's over 1. So we know it has to be equal to negative 2. So x equals negative 2. That means e to the negative 2 is equal to 1 over e to the 2. All right, so those are the questions. Um, thanks for watching. There will be more <coughs> um, suggested questions in the description of the video below. Uh, my name is Logan. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.